the falling leaves drift by the window the autumn leaves of red and gold hey everybody welcome to madden science i'm at home down the street from my parents house in whippany new jersey we're looking at why it is that trees change colors and why their leaves change colors in the autumn. This is a catalpa tree and it's got amazing pigmentation throughout. Changes from green to yellow to red and gradients in both directions. So why is it that trees in the fall change the color of their leaves? What's happening underneath with their pigments? We asked a good friend of mine, Dr. Chris Frost at the University of Louisville, this exact same question. Now, Dr. Frost and I go way back to our time exploring in the Peruvian Amazon rainforest. He was nice enough to hang out with our class on a video conference. All right, Dr. Frost, thanks so much for meeting with us today. Kids are super pumped. Uh, say hello, everybody. I am a plant chemical ecologist or a plant biologist and I am interested in how plants defend themselves against whatever, they, whatever stress they, they have to encounter in their life. And so chemical ecologists are interested in the chemistry that plants use to avoid or ameliorate the damage that they might experience. And that damage can be by herbivores, things that chew on them, but it also can be by pathogens, things that would cause disease. Now it's autumn and plant leaves are changing color all over the place. It's beautiful, but there's a lot of different ideas as to why that might be happening. Can you help us understand why it is that plants change the color of their leaves come fall? Sure. Who thinks or who has any evidence that those pigments are produced only in the fall? Oh, we got a few, two takers. All right, then, then everyone else by default, maybe, who thinks that those pigments are always present? All right, so most of you think that it's right. So it turns out, it turns out that the second is probably more correct. Those pigments um, are present in the plant throughout the course of development. And the reason that those pigments are there is because they are also photosynthetically active. They just are not as efficient as chlorophyll. And so chlorophyll is more abundant. See that chlorophyll. That chlorophyll reflects green, and so it masks all of the wonderful colors of fall. It masks the oranges, it masks the yellows, it masks the reds. Uh, the yellows are carotenoids, the reds are anthocyanins, but you don't see them. They're present, but you just don't see them. Sometimes you will see them if you go out and look at, right at the beginning of spring, when you flush out new leaves, sometimes you will see the reds. That's before chlorophylls develop, so you can actually see them in the leaves. Now here's an important difference uh, that might see if, we'll see if we can get another question in here. So the carotenoids and the anthocyanins have no nitrogen. There's no nitrogen in those whatsoever. But chlorophyll has as its core nitrogen by magnesium. That's a central element of chlorophyll molecule. It's really critical growth and it's the one thing one of the few nutrients that you can't get from just photosynthesizing right they get nitrogen from the soil because it's thing that they have to actually acquire they care quite a bit about it so in the fall actually well before the fall well before you even would perceive it plants are beginning to do what's called resorb that nitrogen it means they're taking it up they're pulling it back and they're storing it in their stem so in the fall, as the leaves change color, that process, breaking down the, the chlorophyll, pulling the nitrogen out, and storing it in what are called vegetative storage proteins. It doesn't care about anthocyanins and carotenoids. It makes those with carbon. And so it doesn't do anything with those. It leaves them there. And that's why you see the fall color. Reason for that, I mean, so there are theories as to why that, to why fall colors exist or why drop at all. I mean, the, the, the primary one probably is 
cold weather, photosynthesis is not as efficient. And if you leave leaves on a plant and you get freezes, that creates incredible dead weight. If you've ever seen or been around uh, during, uh, during a season where you get a freezing rain before all the leaves have dropped, what tends to happen? break they fall off if leaves because of the weight of the extra ice on those leaves branches fall off so leaves drop and then you have these bare stems they can handle that without a problem some some people have forwarded the idea that herbivory creates a stress that generates this and that might be true in some systems i don't really know but but certainly really consistent patternation of seeing fall colors and then leaf drop associated with the deposition of stuff that would create pretty heavy mass on the weight of a, of a trunk it is probably one of the best advantages. And, and evergreens don't really have that, right? Because they're, they've evolved needle structures. Those needle structures, unless under really severe strain, really don't have the surface area and therefore have the weight that a broadleaf would have. All right, Dr. Frost, I think that's about it. Uh, one last Drift question. Thanks so much for window. chatting with us today. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.